Um, one thing I was going to say is, shall we have a look at um, Particle Shop? This is Particle Shop. Um, it starts off a lot like um, Painter. It basically is a plugin for Photoshop. Um, and it starts off a lot like Painter. So here you can see the um, here you can see the particle shop shop as it were. So you can see all the brushes that are available to buy, and these are the same brushes that you can buy in Painter. So you can see the uh, so you can see the storm spaced out. You see the totally brilliant light it up brushes here. Dust and debris, flame, superhero brushes. You can have a quick flick through some of the some of the brushes. There we are. Yeah, those are cool. Covers covers all your needs too, because you know I've done a lot of photo editing myself, and if you want something like a light burst or flames, things like that, you would normally have to either be really good at drawing that stuff in Photoshop or you'd have to have a photo reference that you then composite into it using blend modes. And this way, if you want fire, you just paint the fire wherever you want it. You're not going to have all of the control that you would have in Corel Painter as far as being able to tweak the brushes and use other brushes with them. So there are some limitations there, but again, it's kind of... It's not really meant to be used for painting. Like it's not meant to, to take all the features of Corel Painter or all the particle brush features and move them into Photoshop. It's just kind of a the essential features that photo editors would want to use. Yeah, it's a plugin. It's a yeah. Photoshop plugin. So um, you can buy these sets here, and obviously I just click buy now. So I'll open this up, and obviously I've got all of these installed already. So here we've got an image of our, our little superhero here. I'll just see what I'll just close that down. At the moment, I'm using a, a Wacom 27 QHD touch, so I can uh, do that and just turn my touch screen on and off and turn my little keyboard on and off. Um, but I can kind of grab a brush here and the good thing is my uh, this is kind of like a little cut down version of painter i have the same yeah. controls so my brush size works exactly the same as painter as you can see mm -hmm. you know I, I don't have the same kind of same tool size options as uh, photoshop so i've got different uh, different brushes here and i can use kind of portal for example and create kind of a lightning strike let me just undo that and uh, pick a color here so if I go for this nice bright vibrant and just like in paint I can turn glow on and off obviously superpowers always look better nice and bright there you go Ooh. they also look better with a uh, suppose there we go. and these will work with these will work with the mouse and with the tablet um, you're going to get more control if you have a tablet, but you can still use them with the mouse. It's pretty cool. There's a, a lot of these brushes um, are probably going to use glow, I would imagine. Like, like you said, the superhero brushes especially. So you're going to want to make sure that you turn glow on for those. Otherwise, it's not going to look quite right. That color wheel is like the temporal color wheel in Painter. Um, if you select a color and then you paint, it disappears. There's also a little pin button if you want it to be showing all the time rather than disappearing. There you go. You can, you can pin it down. Um, and then there's the blender also. That's pretty cool. It's it's a blender, and you don't have a lot of control over it like you would in Painter. But no, it's just that. It, from s somebody else said this, um, it's better than the blenders in Photoshop. I can't really confirm that because I don't really use Photoshop for blending. What do you think? It's a very nice blender. It's a really, really good standard blender, actually. Yeah. And um, 
it's actually um, it's actually better than Photoshop Standard Blender. Yeah, I will say that. That's cool. But on the other hand, I will also say, you know, I will. I wouldn't just outright say it's better. I'd say it's different. Yeah. I'm not one of these people who has to say one's better than the other. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. You know, why does one thing have to be better than the other? I guess it's it's all subjective. It depends on what you do with it, you know. Might yeah. might be better for some and not for others. So you can see there was a little bit of lag on that one, but Yeah. It's bigger brush, but it's doing a lot and it's doing it through a plugin too. So something one to keep in mind. One of my favorite ones on this one, actually, let me just find it. Uh, there we go. This is probably my favorite one from this set. Oops. I was like accidentally holding down another button there. This one, cause it's so light. You probably can't see this actually. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It's making little, Tiny little dots. Fairy dust or something. Yeah. It's nice that? when you work it in with something else. Yeah. What about the hairbrushes? How do those work? The hairbrushes are absolutely great. It was just, this one's my favorite. I actually used this uh, recently in an illustration. Let's make this kid into a hippie. Yeah. And so right now you're working on a single layer image. Um, you can also work on, you can add this stuff to a separate layer. Um, one of the downsides to that though, is that you won't be able to see the background. No, I'll just be working on a transparent layer if I do. Yeah. That is the, the only downside. Yeah. But you could, for a lot of things, um, you could paint in your fire and then exit out of the plugin and then just move the fire to where you want it to be. Or you can just paint on a single layer like this. Yeah, those curly haired ones are really cool. I actually had, I had fun just going into poser and then just, oh, ma just making bald, bald models and then painting hair on them just to practice how to use those brushes. That's just me. Yeah. Looks like Macho Man Randy Savage now. That's kind of what I was going for. 